You want to go to the woods? So thanks for coming on this virtual hike with me. So I want you to think about a few things before we, we go much further. In the 1990s, the decade of the brain, we realized that the brain needs exercise, kind of like the body. We call that mindfulness, being in the present moment. So there's three aspects of mindfulness that you can practice when you're out here. The first one is focused attention. In yoga, we call that dharana. Second one is open awareness. So open awareness is where you kind of sit back and you go, what's my brain doing during this hike? And what sort of things draw my attention? And what sort of things are hard for me to focus on? And then the third one is kind intention. And when I first heard that, I was like, kind intention? What it, how is that a pillar of mind training? Well, if you think about it, how often do we beat ourselves up over the things the aspects of ourselves that we don't like, or we beat up other people in our mind. So because we're relational creatures, kind intention is really important to ourselves. So as you go on this virtual hike, if you notice you're not very good at holding your attention, it's all right, just realize maybe you don't have that much experience with it.
mindfulness is kind of like weightlifting. I lift weights not so much because of what happens right as I'm lifting weights, but it enables me to do things that I ordinarily wouldn't be able to do. It improves the overall quality of my life. So sometimes when you, so on the hike today, if you feel yourself struggling, just remind yourself, oh, mindfulness is kind of like lifting weights. It's not always glorious. It improved my mind function overall throughout the day. Something really interesting happened as I filmed this uh, video over a couple days. One particular day it was sunny and there was people everywhere and I had my dogs. And so I, so I was really distracted and rushed. And when I came home, I noticed that all the footage was the same. It was very similar. The next day I came out here, it was raining. I was the only one out here. I didn't have my dogs. Because I wasn't rushed, I was able to take in details that I had missed the previous day. And I think that's the power of slowing down. If we're going to meditate or be mindful of our environment and enrich our lives in the process, we've got to take, we've got to make the choice to slow down. And have when we have that beginner's mind and we wake up to the potential of everything around us, we begin to notice new things and it enriches our experience. So let me give you an example. I walk this creek all the time. And one day I noticed a rock that was totally different than all the other rocks. It's right here. So all the rest of this rock is limestone. I show you some fossils and this was laid down, uh, scientists believe a, around 400 million years ago during the Ordovician, when this area was actually a shallow coral reef, which is why we have coral reef fossils. But But this rock is granite. It was, it's a volcanic rock and it doesn't belong here. And I, one day I noticed it and I realized, although I'm not a geologist, this is most likely an erratic. It was a rock, it, it's a rock that was brought here by a glacier. So by opening up my senses, I realized something in my environment that I didn't realize before. 
as we focus our attention, we learn to focus our mind, we exercise that muscle of attention, it awakens us to the details of life that are all around us that we could be missing and that enrich our lives. So how's your hike going? Let's do a little open awareness. Where do you notice your mind going during this virtual hike? Have you ever noticed when a new uh, movie trailer comes out from Hollywood that it's it just captures your attention, these, these short, really interesting clips, and it's so easy to focus? That's the opposite of Dharana. That's like brain candy. So Hollywood knows how the brain works. And they're giving us brain candy. But what if, as that opening quote said, there's a lot of magic around us waiting for our senses to pick up on? What if there are magical things all around us, but they require our attention? 